winning the Apple Cup, you guys should never play Washington again. You should never schedule a game with these scums who left you guys at high and dry. It's fair hate. You know what I mean? Like that was messed up. See, so you basically took two number one West Coast programs out of another conference put them in what they consider now and what they have considered the premier conference on the West Coast and the Pac-12. So you legitimize things from a basketball standpoint. Yeah, Memphis just either, you know, shit or get off the pot to use a, you know, that's the only phrase you can really think of. I mean, they're saying they got a bad offer. Well, the offer's the offer, Memphis. What else are you going to do? All right, today is a continuation of the conversation talking about Gonzaga to the Pac-12. Today we're bringing on another college basketball specialist. Dylan, who are we bringing on? Yeah, Connor, big time guest, Tate Frazier, the host of One Shining Podcast through the Ringer Network. He covers a ton of college basketball, one of the big name guys when you're taking a look around the sport. So it's going to be great to talk to him about the Gonzaga edition and just kind of the overall strength of the new Pac-12 from a basketball standpoint. All right, Tate, thanks for joining us on the podcast. It was announced just over a week ago that Gonzaga is moving to the Pac-12 after 45 years in the WCC. What are your initial reactions to this move? I think it's a good move for, you know, the diehard Pac-12 basketball fans, right? I mean, the Gonzaga was one of those, you know, fish, uh, you know, a big fish in a little pond type of situation there with the WCC. They've owned the WCC. Uh, St. Mary's fans don't want to hear that, but really it is Gonzaga's league. They became a national brand. We know about them having their, their own private plane. They can get anywhere. They can play anybody. Mark Few is the de facto number one coach in the sport right now, even though they're still looking for the national championship. So it's a big win for the Pac-12. It's a big win for uh, kind of the future of the conference, right? There was a there were some dark times there. There's two teams. We're joking about the Pac-2, but we're laughing because we don't want to cry. We all know how that feels. So getting Gonzaga into the fold along with the other Mountain West teams that they poached, it was a little bit of dirty business, but hurt people hurt people. I keep saying that. So they got poached. They're poaching the Mountain West. And, uh, you know, I do feel for the WCC, but they're going to be all right. I mean, they still have good teams. And if anything, that opens the door up for a San Francisco to come back or an LMU to take a leap or Pepperdine to become a powerhouse, right? So the WCC will be fine. And I think this will be Gonzaga's, you know, big step that we've been waiting for for a very, very long time. One of those dominoes that felt like it might never fall, it finally did for the Pac-12. Well, it's funny, you know, Washington State and Oregon State kind of turned into the the infamous Harvey Dent quote: "You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself right. become the villain." You know, kind of kind of go into not just um, Gonzaga, but adding a school like Colorado State with Nico Medved and Ali. I'm not even going to pronounce his last name because I'm going to butcher it. But Northern Iowa legend, kind of kind of coaching in waiting. Uh, you have a Utah State program that has had multiple coaches but they've gotten them to the to the to the dance Danny Sprinkles one year wonder and then obviously you have SDSU and Gonzaga two schools that have been in the national championship in the last 4 years kind of spearheading this league from a basketball standpoint yeah, you got the best basketball program in the Mountain West, San Diego State. Uh, you know, they got the Flying Dutchman, Brian Dutcher, who uh, just continues to win. He takes, you know, over for a coach who was able to do it at Michigan, Steve Fisher, and has been able to continue and keep that program going. It does feel like it has legs of its own, and uh, getting them in the league is really good. Um, also, Gonzaga, like I said, the class of the WCC. So you basically took two number one West Coast programs out of another conference, put them in what they consider now and what they have considered the premier conference on the West Coast and the Pac-12. So you legitimize things from a basketball standpoint. And then on the football side, you guys just saw it. I know it's, uh, you know, we were just talking about before we got on the air, but seeing Boise State, Boise State has been a program in football that has come into the national spotlight in the 21st century. And we've seen them at different iterations be a top flight program. And they might have the Heisman Trophy winner, as we just saw with Ashton Genty, who the man averages eight yards a carry. And, you know, it feels like if they're in a legitimate power conference, they're going to get even more of these type of players. And obviously they have their own great brand with the blue field and all this other stuff. So you're getting good brand additions. Uh, Colorado State has been a, a team that's now developing NBA players, uh, has a nice recruiting pool there. They also have, you know, Team USA facilities out there in Colorado Springs. So like they're able to, you know what I mean? There, there's they're able to finesse the, the situation there. Fresno State has a great fan base. Uh, you guys saw it in the bowl game. Uh, they came out and were very excited to watch their Bulldogs. Also have had some, you know, obviously, you know, Devontae Adams and the cars, and, you know. So, I mean, there's legacy, there's lineage, there's, you know, they check a lot of boxes. And these are programs that have probably been in the Mountain West thinking to themselves, we could beat these Pac-12 teams, right? We could be there. Now they get to be a part of the party. 
And uh, hopefully, you know, with the more resources and notoriety, they can take a leap. And, and that's a big win for everybody. But Gonzaga, San Diego State, those are the two home runs on a basketball side. They currently need one more program for football. They already have eight for basketball. We hear Memphis a lot as one of the one of the potential schools that might be coming in. What are your thoughts on the potential addition of Memphis? Yeah, Memphis just either, you know, shit or get off the pot to use a, you know, that's the only phrase you can really think of. I mean, they're saying they got a bad offer. Well, the offer's the offer, Memphis. What else are you going to do? Um, the ACC is obviously not going to call because of academic standards. The Big Ten's not going to call for the same reasons. The Big 12 may be. But the Big 12, I mean, their slogan is what's next, uh, which I changed to who's next, right? Who's next for them to poach and try to bring into the fold. So maybe it is Memphis. Maybe they try to get some sort of bidding war going. But as long as no one else wants you, the Pac-12 is a pretty good deal for Memphis. Obviously, they want someone else, you know, in the, the southern, east, southeast, whatever you want to call it, part of the state to kind of be a partner with. We don't know who that would be. But, uh, you know, if, if the Pac-12 can convince them, independently that's a big win so uh yeah memphis is probably the biggest fish left out there as far as resources fan base history you know notoriety all that sort of stuff so it would be a win for the pac-12 and uh you know maybe it does make the big 12 try to make a move and you know they can go after it for memphis but uh you know the tigers feel like they're left out to dry right now so i feel bad for all the memphis fans you know, one thing we've seen from the Pac-12 and just their announcements, their conference announcements is stating, hey, you know, with these new additions, we're all collectively going to find who we want to add. And they said the same right. thing in terms of Gonzaga and reports from from Gonzaga channels that that I know of. They want another high net team in. So there's a possibility of another non-basketball school. But I had an interesting uh, quote from Sean Farnham, uh, who said, mm. You know, 100% of realignment moves have been based solely on football um, and football revenue generated for a conference. This was the first time where basketball was at the forefront of the process. And he said, I suspect it won't be the Pac-12's only move in that regard. So when you're taking a look at other brands, St. Mary's, who when you have that gym packed, it, it feels like it's Florida in there. They don't have the best facilities from a standpoint. And you look at what the drop off would be if a Randy Bennett left. So from a non basketball or from a basketball only side, what are you think the best options uh, school wise? Yeah. I mean, Memphis helps with basketball too. Obviously uh, they have some, some history there. So that would be a, a good addition for basketball and for football reasons. St. Mary's would be great just because of Randy Bennett. I'd worry what it looks like post Randy Bennett. I feel like San Diego state, like I said, they have their own legs as a program. I mean, St. Mary's has the fan base. People love it, but I don't know if it's, you know, coach driven or culture driven, whatever you, you know, you can, we can have that argument out, but um, that would be the only concern there. Um, I mean, I feel like there's a few WCC programs, maybe San Francisco as well. I mean, you got the market there. They have the deal with the Chase Center that, you know, it's a big market. That's a lot of this stuff, too, where, you know, the Big Ten apparently really wants Miami because they want the Miami TV, TV market. You know what I mean? So it's it, that sort of stuff kind of comes into the equation, too. So maybe that's a reason why you go after uh, San Francisco. You got San Diego with uh, San Diego State. So that's a big win. But yeah, there's a lot of layers to the whole thing. And honestly, we joke about tampering in the transfer portal. There's so much tampering with realignment right now where presidents are calling each other, board of governors are talking to each other. You know, there, there's commissioners of leagues like a Sankey, right, reaching out to see, you know, what, what the interest is from a North Carolina or Virginia to go to the SEC, whatever it is, Clemson. So there's just a lot of like, you know, there's a lot of shady business going on. Who would have thought uh, in the world of uh, high academics, there could be so much, uh, it's almost like a mob movie, you know what I mean, with some of this stuff. But the, the, the Pac-12 has to be proactive. I think that's the real thing. Like the ACC has been reactive um, and look where that's kind of gotten them, even though Cal has been a nice uh, addition in football for whatever reason, Cal developed a fan base uh, on the internet between, you know, leaving the Pac-12 and going to the ACC, the Calgarhythm as they're calling it. So uh, some of this stuff, you don't even really know what's going to work. Um, Stanford and Cal and SMU have been great for the ACC. I think the fan base has seemed to not, you know, kind of get along or whatever, not get along, you know, for better. Um, so, uh, you know, you're just trying to look for good fits. It's a, it's like swiping through profiles, you know what I mean? That's what uh, the Pac-12 is doing right now. And they're trying to figure out, like, uh, what best checks the box. So, uh, yeah, and it's it's ongoing. So I feel bad for everybody involved. But it's good for Wazoo and Oregon State. It's not just those two guys doing stepbrothers uh, together. Now they got some real friends. 
Do you, do you see any parallel kind of jumping back to Gonzaga? Like, let's go to Butler. They're in the Horizon mm. League. Brad Stevens takes off. And obviously, Butler changes conferences. Do you see kind of something similar where maybe Mark Few is looking, all right, hey, I've got Michelson, you know, in waiting, but where is going to be the best landing spot for Gonzaga if I'm not here in five years or if I'm not here in 10 years? I mean, how, how much of those talks do you think kind of went into the move? I mean, a lot, obviously. Uh, you know, Mark Few has probably been pushing this behind the scenes for quite some time because he's like, you know, I know we have a top flight, top 10, top five, whatever you want to argue program in the country, and we're willing to play anybody anywhere. And they're finally getting teams to come out to play them in Spokane, even though it's not always at the kennel, you know, it's at the Pavilion Center or whatever it is. You know, that's not really their home court, but it kind of checks the box there. So, I mean, they've been able to get these big programs, big schools to come out and play them and meet them. But now that they have the backing of a quote-unquote Power 5 conference, they, they have a real shot to, to make a turn. And this is Mark Few's legacy, right? He's at that point in his career where it's like, this is legacy play. As you remember, the Butler, like you said, that jump, it's like a Brad Stevens. This is what he got us on the way out. He got us to jump up to the big leagues, you know, and didn't get us relegated. He, he brought us up and elevated us. Uh, I think it's the same thing for Mark Few. And Mark Few, I mean, how many, he's already named his successor, right? So, I mean, we, we don't even know how many more years. I wouldn't be shocked if we get to a Final Four run and Mark Few pokes his head up and is like, by the way, this is my last year. You know, I mean, he's at that stage of his career. So this could be his, you know, passing of the baton to say, I got Gonzaga to a power five level, uh, so, you know, say la vie, I'll see you at games. And uh, I turned the program over. So, um, you know, we could be at that point in his career, at the twilight point. So uh, that's a big win for Gonzaga and Mark Few and the legacy and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, a lot of people, they, they want to leave some sort of legacy um, or and they want to hang around, you know, these coaches. Everybody, everybody wants to be loved, and uh, Mark Few is loved. So he, he's a few good men. He's the guy. And if it's not for legacy, it's for money. You know, a lot of these <laughs> right. are well, trying to. I, I think that, that is bag. money, right? Yeah, that legacy is tied to money for sure. That's a uh, that's a good point. But so with that, you know, what TV partner do you think might end up wanting to team with the Pac-12 with this expansion of basketball, and you know, with their continued expansion? I love the CW. Don't you guys love the CW? I uh, It's nice I just... to be able to just turn on your cable network and be able to watch <laughs> right, the game. Right there on YouTube yeah. TV, baby. It's right there. And uh, I don't know. I feel like they did, they, they, do, they do a pretty good job. You know what I mean? I, I like CW sports. I'm not going to say it's my number one pick. Um, you know, I think trying to be tied up with a streamer that also has the network capabilities a la NBC, Peacock. I think that's the kind of best place to be because then, you know, you can go to Peacock rewatch restart the game easy to do but then you can also just turn on youtube tv spectrum whatever you have and see it on nbc so um I, you know i think that would be a great option they're obviously in sports trying to make things happen in sports espn's you know pretty much all in on trying to make the sec their number one priority we know what that is and what that's gonna look like um so that that kind of is what it is so you kind of want to go somewhere where you get a little bit of love so yeah i mean cw maybe split some stuff up with nbc peacock you know and uh, I, I feel like they're all a lot of buyers because live rights is the number one thing right now. Everybody needs live rights. So these are live real games and they're going to be good games. And Gonzaga is a nice part of the package, right? Getting Gonzaga into the fold, San Diego State. So you got good markets, you got good teams. So I think you got a good sales pitch there for uh, whatever, whoever wants to, to make a big bid. So that's good news. You know, kind of kind of jumping into David Riley, new head coach of of Washington State. And Tate, you're a college basketball savant. You know, I'm sure you've probably yeah. watched your fair share of Eastern Washington games over the you know the past couple of years. Can you kind of explain to to Cougar Nation his five out offense and just kind of how David Riley's going to operate from a from a philosophy standpoint? Well, he's uh, he seems like a good guy. And I say that not in my, uh, you know, jokey way where it's like he's going to get fired or whatever. Like he seems like a good guy and that like he loves Eastern Washington, uh, that part of the state. And he loves the Wazoo's kind of what has been built by Kyle Smith. And then Kyle Smith had his own personal reasons for leaving the school. You know what I mean? But they really couldn't have asked for someone better to come step in as far as being, uh, you know, progressive in the game, going to have a fun team to watch. And when you have, they're not brothers, but when you have the Watts on this team, uh, you know, Isaiah Watts coming back, uh, Lawan Watts coming over from Eastern Washington, a six foot six hidden gym on this team. I think they're going to be fun to watch. I, I was looking at Torvik's like T rank for this team. They, they got him like 85 or whatever. 
but it does feel like with some of these teams that you know they they just kind of they, they somehow filter into the no matter who is there or who's coach or whatever they kind of get put into the same number spots you know with some of these sites or whatever but wazoo gets a little bit disrespected in my opinion even last year i was like this team I watched him early. I was like, this team is really good. And they have uh, a lot of talent, even like a Yakimovsky, who's going to be probably Colorado's <laughs> number one option this year, um, who was the third or fourth option last year for Wazoo, which is pretty wild to think about. Um, and obviously, you know, Wazoo had a tough matchup in the tournament against Iowa State. You know, that's what happens when you were kind of, you know, seated as they were. But what David Riley's going to bring is a fun, modern, progressive five out offense. Like you said, he's bringing guys over from Eastern Washington, getting guys back like Isaiah Watts that are familiar faces, faces that love the program. I think that's going to be really fun for this team. And, uh, you know, there's no hard feelings with Kyle Smith. You're not, you're not going to have to play him. You're not going to, you know, if you went to Stanford and you were still in the Pac-12, it's like we got to play Kyle Smith. You know, that's not that, that kind of icky. I don't want to do that. So it's like he's away. Uh, David Riley's good energy. He's good vibes. I think you guys are a little bit underrated based on like what I'm seeing in sort of the projections of this team. So, yeah, I just think it's going to be fun and it's going to be, you know, last year was really fun and beating Arizona twice was awesome. Making the tournament was great, but this is going to be a little bit of a reset. But I think this team will be better than maybe people are giving them credit for. So. Um, that, that's sort of my, you know, one minute take on what to expect from uh, the Cougs this year. And before we, we jumped on here, we started to hear about Project Rudy and, potentially, <laughs> right. you know, 70 different teams being in a super conference. Do you want to talk through kind of what you've heard? I know it's all just rumors at this point. I mean, where, where do we start? Uh, th there's a new every single day with this stuff. I mean, we, there's a new landscape. How can we keep up with so many terrains is the big question in college sports right now. But yeah, the new, I guess, idea that was leaked out, Project Rudy, um, trying to ru ruin Rudy for everybody. You know what I mean? It's like it, talk about connotations of words. Now we're going to think of this stupid plan as opposed to this great movie. Um, Notre Dame fans are gonna be shaking their fists at the sky right now, but yeah, so it's like a 70 team power conference, super conference, whatever you want to call it. Um, that will then be broken into regions. Uh, dare I say what the NCAA already did and we've already seen. So I guess someone wants to recreate the will here, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll let it pass, but a uh, wazoo would be a part of the 70 team plan. I guess, uh, this is all like speculation and it's apparently, um, a private equity company that presented this whole idea to the big 10 and to the sec. They have their own conversations that are happening about creating a super conference. They already have 20 teams combined, right? So they're already 40 on the way to 70. There's 30 more teams that kind of fill into the void. Wazoo is a part of the 70 plan, a 70 team plan that is Dean Project Rudy. So that's a win for the Cougs. Um, but just all this talk is insane. And, you know, the, the NCAA has no enforcement arm anymore. Every time they go to court, they lose. So we are ultimately in the wild, wild west. And uh, everyone is trying to find gold. And everyone thinks they're the 49ers and they're going to go figure it out. But um, <laughs> it's it's very, very wild times, to say the least. But, yes, this is the latest in our wild super conference conversation project rudy so file that away into uh you know we've had many different iterations of uh of, of the future of college sports but now it is dean project rudy so shout out to the private equity brand that made that happen and uh when private equity gets into all of this it's going to be a mess so uh you know good luck uh to our future uh institutions i i feel like there's going to be you know we have mergers and businesses there's going to be divergers of like the schools are going to diverge their interests from these sports teams that are, you know, already tied to the schools by name. Um, and it's going to be a name only. So uh, I, I think we have a wild future ahead, but project Rudy, another step. Um, so we, we, we can talk about that. Uh, I'm sure in five more years and we'll be like, can you, do you remember project Rudy, how crazy that was? You know, <laughs> that'll probably be what happens. Yeah. Cause it's talking about that, you know, project Rudy would begin after all the current major media rights deals expire around the 2031 season. So, I mean, it's all people can speculate for the next seven years and come up oh, with as many ideas as they want. 2031. That's too far. That's the, uh, that's, that's, yeah, right. uh, that's like, I keep seeing these contract extensions like Grant McCaslin at Texas tech just got through 29 30. I'm like, man, we don't even know what the sport looks like at that time, but you know, I'm glad he got his money. You know, that's good. So you know, we'll, we'll be talking about it. That's for sure. Uh, you mentioned that you were hoping that WCU and OSU were going to the, to the ACC. Do you want to talk yeah. through kind of that thought process and the reason behind that? 
Well, I'm just, you know, the ACC is reactive, not proactive. There were four teams that were sitting out there that they could really, you know, that, that were in the, the former Pac-12. I think, you know, Stanford has the most team in NCAA championships, right? And obviously Tiger Woods, so we want them. Uh, we want Cal Berkeley. That's a public school with a bunch of smart kids. That's what we like to pride ourselves on. So, yeah, we want them too. Uh, also, Marshawn Lynch, that's a nice bonus. SMU, we got George Bush and Condoleezza Rice. Cha-ching, nice, needed them. Um, and then I'm just looking at the Beavs and the Cougs. It's like these are two SEC fan bases, really. Um, you know, that are up in the Pacific Northwest. Why don't we take these diehard fans, bring them to a conference that could always use more diehard fandom and some, you know, interesting schools that have their own history and like even a Tony Bennett right at, at Virginia, like he's got his own history with Wazoo. Um, Oregon State, they beat North Carolina in the national championship game in baseball back in 2005, 2006. I'll never forgive the bees for that. Yeah, I'll never forgive uh, the Oregon State Beavs uh, for breaking my heart as a kid. But also, tip of the cap, respect. You know what I mean? You earn my respect, you can get an invite to the ACC. So I just felt like with those four teams out there, you needed to fill the numbers anyway. Why not create a pod on the West Coast with those four teams? You have these two academic institutions. You have these two great fan bases and, and good schools in their own unique places. Why not just take all four and pot them out and make it work? I mean, that's what the Big Ten basically did with their teams, with with Washington, Oregon, and uh, USC and UCLA. So basically do a version of that. And I, I'm still don't, not sure why they didn't do that. And SMU, take all five. Maybe Memphis, take six. Um, get to 20. Be done with it. But who am I? I don't know. So that, I just thought that would be a good fun plan for everybody. And uh, then it's at any coast conference, all coast conference, uh, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, we get we get everybody. So uh, and I and my girlfriend selfishly went to Wazoo. So I get to our conference game, you know, so that that would have been great. We Everybody would have won, but it was too simple, I guess. Perfect plug. You know, speaking of that, um, we got to hear this Cougar report card. How many basketball games? How many football games? Give us the update. Have you been to? <laughs> I, I haven't been to any. Uh, I mean, I, none. You know, I, I've been to no. Well, I'm supposed to go to the San Diego State game, um, you know, okay. but Cousin Sal has a Halloween party that same night and the game is at night. So there's a chance we don't go. But, you know, that's that might not happen. Would, that's the game I need to go to uh, to make it to make it simple. And then we're, you know, I mean, I've been up to Seattle, um, you know, I've been to a couple of Seahawks games, uh, been to one manners game in my life, but not even with my girlfriend, but just, you know, in my in my previous life. Thoughts on the ballpark? Uh, beautiful. Great. I mean, you, you can't beat it. Well, it's T-Mobile now. When I went, it yeah. wasn't T-Mobile, but now it's T-Mobile. So weird. And, that I, and that honestly, word. shout out to T-Mobile. T-Mobile is kind of. If you're not up on T-Mobile, T-Mobile has really changed the game. I mean, Starlink, yes, they're giving some, you know, they're helping with people with all this sort of stuff, the hurricanes, but so is T-Mobile. I don't see people talking about T-Mobile, so I uh, just wanted to give them a plug as well. This is not brought to you by T-Mobile, just saying. I appreciate how they changed their whole game. But, yeah, I love I love the P&W. Got to go to uh, Lake Chalet in the summer. Incredible place. Beautiful. The home of yeah. Joe Harris, uh, Virginia legend, who just yeah. retired. Shout out Joe Harris. Um, so, you know, I, I've got Washington some nice culture. Yeah, I got some Washington. Lake Chelan. Yeah, it was nice. Beautiful. Well, beautiful well I tell you what, you got to tell Riley, hey, if you don't yeah. make the uh, SDSU game, just rain check it for next year. We're going to Ole Miss. All right. Okay, SEC right. country. It was just announced yesterday. So Right. Yeah. Wake Forest backed out. They're chicken. They, they don't want to play Ole Miss. And uh, Lane Kiffin called him out. And then, yeah, they called up Wazoo. I like Jake Dickert. Um, sometimes I feel like there's this weird, but in honor of Coach Leach, right, you guys have to go for it on, like, a fourth and three where you have no momentum. And it's like, why can't you just take the points? Um, but I feel like Dickert's fourth getting a little bit better. seven. Yeah, I feel like Dickert's getting a little bit better about like, you know, being smart about that. I don't know. Maybe that's my own perception, but I do feel like it's getting better. And winning the Apple Cup, you guys should never play Washington again. Can that just be my last thing <laughs> that we talk about? You should never schedule a game with these scums uh, who left you guys <laughs> high and dry. Um, I would never, ever schedule. If Duke did that to Carolina or NC State, if we did that to State, I would expect them to have the, to, to have the same disdain for me. So th that's my final piece. Um, fair it, enough. It's, it's fair hate. You know what I mean? Like, that was messed up. Look what Arizona did. The, I mean, Oregon's messed up, too. Like, Oregon's messed up, too. So I just, uh, you know, that, that was also, you got to take care of the people in your state. You know what I mean? That's says something about who you are. So, you know, Husky. don't cut anything there, Connor. 
Don't cut anything. <laughs> I'm just I'm, oh, I'm not. And Jake Dickard actually, after the game, he said that he's going to retire that trophy because that was the Pac-12 Apple Cup trophy. And he's right. going to make a new one for next year where it's the the Big Ten Pac-12 trophy. And Cougs are 1-0 mm. in this era. So it works out. Yeah, right. Last trophy. You guys keep it forever. Uh, that's the real Apple Cup. You can call the, the new iteration the Snapple Cup and have it sponsored. And, <laughs> you know, that seems like where college, college sports is moving at this point. So, um, yeah, but you guys won the last one that really mattered. And you did it in front of everybody in Seattle, like in, you know, in Century On, on a neutral Stadium. site. Yeah. On a neutral yeah. site, right. Yeah. <laughs> with, with all the cutaways to their boats and the whole broadcast basically being like, how can Washington not win this game? Um, you guys did it, so it was great. Well, Tate, thank you so much for joining us. We know you're a busy man. Um, yeah. We appreciate it. The best in college basketball with the Couch GM tonight. Hey, man, appreciate you guys. Anytime you need me and uh, David Riley, year one or year zero, whatever he does, it's all positive spin. So uh, I'll be back and uh, appreciate you guys having me on.